following presentation is made possible in part by a grant from the Ohio Arts Council. Its beauty was so respected that the medieval Venetians introduced it in the trade centers of the time as Venetian lace. Under this name, Slovenian bobbin lace graced the lords and ladies of Europe. I was born 1901 in the village of Jiri. That is between Škofiloka, Idria, and Logatec. My mother had 12 children. I was the tenth one, and our village men were shoemakers, women were making lace. When I was 19 and a half, I married my Jack. My husband came to America to make better living, 1922. He sent for me, and I come with my daughter Annie, 1923. We come to Cleveland, I live here since then. We have two more children, a son, Myron, and daughter, Ruth. One baby boy died. I learned to make lace from my mother and my sisters. I don't remember when I learned. I must be very young. Every good lace maker knows how to prepare her basic materials, her pillow, the poster, or bula, and her bobbins, klekelji. The pillow is made in different sizes, depending on the size of the lace piece to be worked, but all pillows are constructed of a cotton fabric cover over which a second outer cover can be added, end pieces of fabric, and sawdust. Anna's pillows are filled with over two pounds of sawdust. I put a piece of material at the ends to cover the hole so the sawdust don't come out. The material must be strong to hold the sawdust. The sawdust has to be solid, so I pound it down. It takes a long time to make the pillow. In Slovenia, this second cover is also made of sturdy cotton fabric and is added only after the pillow's first fabric cover becomes soiled. Anna prefers to complete her pillow immediately with a second cover of stretch fabric. That was my idea to use stretchy material. It make it easy to pin the pattern on. The completed pillow is fitted snugly into a basket and becomes, basically, a big pin cushion. Our lace maker moves on to prepare her bobbins. Early bobbins were made of bone, and the lace is still, at times, referred to as bone lace. Contemporary bobbins are made of hardwood and usually stained. The thread must always be wound on the bobbin from under the bobbin as it is held in the hand. Notice the motion of Anna's hands. The up and down winding pattern resembles the filling motion of a sewing machine bobbin. When I finished up winding the bobbin, I have to make a loop so the bobbin won't slide down and unwind when I make the lace. Although Anna prefers to hand wind her bobbins, commercial cottage industry lace makers in Slovenia use a hand-powered machine. My hands is my machine. Linen or cotton thread is used, graded by number, 70, 50, 30, 20 according to its fineness. The higher the number, the more delicate the lace. 
the most I use is cotton thread number 50 and 30. More open lace needs number 30 thread or the lace will be too soft. The working of the lace begins. Anna pins one of her many patterns onto the pillow. You always put the paper under because it tears easy. See, this is the stretchy material to make it more easy to pin in the pattern. This design dates from the 1800s and is worked in the old style. In the old, you twist the thread. The new style is not twisted, just straight. The bobbins are placed on the pillow in pairs. I use mostly seven pairs of bobbins to make my lace. The number of bobbins for a piece of lace has been known to exceed 50 pairs. Simple strands of thread begin to take shape in the hands of our folk artist. A crochet hook is used to help pull threads through small spaces. This is my carpenter tool. The work is done. The pins are removed. and another family treasure is created to grace the ring bearer's pillow for a grandchild's wedding. Anna's patterns are usually Xeroxed copies of pieces of lace or pictures of designs which she then adapts to a lace pattern. Far from the contemporary method of pattern copying is this pattern by John Oblock of Giri which Anna purchased in 1913. It is a hand-drawn design on oak tag paper, a paper similar to the thickness of a manila folder. Estimated to be 200 years old, here is a design drawn on parchment and coated with carpenter's glue as a preservative. An important design element in bobbin lace is the ribbon tape, the ris. Distinctive to Idria, the major Slovenian lace-making center since the 17th century, was the wide ris, known as the Idria ring. The narrow ris developed after 1918 as a result of Italian influence during the Italian presence in the area between World Wars I and II. Initially, bobbin lace was made in metrical lengths. It was used as a decorative border for liturgical garments, church linens, folk dress, and finer domestic linens, such as this tablecloth made in 1935 by Maria Mauser, with a bobbin lace border made by Maria's mother, Mrs. Habian. Other forms emerged as other uses appeared, table scarves and runners, collars, and, more recently, Anna's creations, a ring bearer's pillow, pendants, and Christmas ornaments. Moving from functional pieces to art pieces, lace pictures. Designs show great diversity, stars in little circles, srčkovke, little hearts, Zvezde, stars. Kranslovke, little crowns. Florals. And random swirls and twirls. Nashivanya laces, sewn laces, derive their name from the method of construction. Bobbin lace pattern pieces are joined together by decorative needlework to create the finished design. Anna works at her hobby of lace making in her home. 
She works alone here in America. In Slovenia, group work was a common practice, especially in the environs of Idria. From Martinmas to Easter, November to spring, the quiet season in rural Slovenia, groups of women would visit as they worked on their lace making. These sewing bees, termed uvas hoditi, were known to exist as late as 1970 and are probably still enjoyed in various villages. I was working barbed lace in Slovenia. That was my work. When I had passed to America on a passport is my name. When they ask me what you do, what is your job? You know, they put my job, Chip Karica, that means I am a barbed lace lady. <laughs> 